there that are mad because Pluto got demoted yes. about a dozen years ago. Pluto, if they had known about Pluto when it was discovered, There's almost a couple of little black ago, flex. they wouldn't have called it a planet. We, they couldn't see it worth a hoot. It was a little teeny white smear on a glass plate, a photographic plate. And they said, look, there's a planet. It's moving. They didn't know if it was big or not. It was just a white dot. And they said, wow, it must be big. It's far away. And then Pluto just kept shrinking. And so they finally classified it as a dwarf planet. I go, and of course, I told you I do a lot of school programs, and kids are like, oh, you know, we want to slit our wrists because they demoted Pluto to a dwarf planet, you know, and it's like against dwarfs or something other. And I said, here's the cool part. You orbit a dwarf sun. I said, so Pluto's got friends. <laughs> He's a dwarf planet, He's got a dwarf sun. I said, they're buddies. They, they belong to each other now. We're just little chunks of rock floating around, but they have the same classification. Oh. Pluto's my friend. This is excellent. So, when you think, oh wow, wait, the sun is pretty big here. The sunspots that some of you have looked at, they weren't even there six days ago. Five days ago, one sunspot appeared. I thought, ooh, we're going to get lucky because sunspots usually work in pairs. So sure enough, before that day was over with, he had a buddy. They're starting to move. These sunspots have kind of ripped up the surface of the sun between them, so it looks more like a scab almost, a long scab. One little sunspot, most of them you could fit about two to three Earths in. So the little specks on the sun, way bigger than us, way bigger. We are a moat of dust truly orbiting a big, ball of gas and so in and we're pretty fortunate because today you will get to be part of the most watched human event in all mankind it is predicted that somewhere in the neighborhood of about 70 percent of the entire population of the world will see this event and so you're part of it and you get to see it live. So anyway, I'll shut up for now. And uh, you've been excellent students and we will, um, oh, we'll start talking a little bit just right before first contact, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 25 minutes away. And, um, and just stay cool. Um, Dr. Cindy, do you need, to, do they need to know anything? Guys, you know that the bathrooms are back up this way. So if you're sweating like me, you don't have to go very often. And they have food down this way. Food. Eclipse glasses if you don't have them. Um, and I will tell you that you must wear your eclipse glasses except during totality. And I've had several people come up to me today and were asking about something and they said, well, you know, you still have to wear them, right? I said, no, 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 during totality, take your glasses off. Otherwise, you won't see anything. All the cool stuff, the corona of the sun, the stars, look around, and we'll talk a little bit more about that between first contact and totality. You must look around. Now, I don't know what our atmosphere conditions are going to be. My phone app keeps telling me that these clouds are really going to roll in. But there is a chance that you will see a 360 degree sunset. And that is pretty cool. And the sunset won't be reddish, it'll be multicolored. It's not a good rainbow, but you could go, wow, there are different colors in the sunset, and the sunset is a big ring around you. Um, I am hoping that if the skies stay clear, that I'll be able to point out Venus to you even three or four minutes before totality. Venus ought to be really bright. And, um, and so I'm hoping we'll be able to point out Venus. Jupiter is going to be in the sky. And it's pretty bright too. If, if we are lucky, if we're lucky, there'll be a kind of a fat, uh, there'll be a star just right below the sun. Very close, very close.